All right, this video is devoted to examining the residuals for normality. So in addition to other reasons that you might use residuals, I write in a textbook that one of the assumptions is that the residuals are normally distributed. And you can look at that directly if you create the residual variable. And we'll look at standardized residuals here. And we can look at them in a histogram. Or we could actually look at them in the Explore utility and standardize residual and look at statistics and look for an outlier and then options plots histogram now i didn't talk about using a interquartile range rule outlier labeling rule for the detection of outliers that are residuals and that's because there's not really any common rule when it comes to residuals I think you could potentially do so, but I write in a textbook that people use z-scores of something like three or four, and I definitely recommend that you consider a standardized residual of four or greater as a possible outlier, and that assumes your sample size is less than a thousand. Now, if we look at the distribution of the outliers here, we can see that it doesn't look like there are any outliers, and the box and whisker plot with the outlier labeling rule with a 1.5 multiplier over here is a warning signal for case 40, but it's not hitting the 3.0 multiplier rule in terms of outlier labeling. And if we look at the z-scores, the largest z-score standardized residual is 2.42. So that's not even bigger than three. And so I would be inclined to think that the residuals are normally distributed in this case. And the reason that's important is that we expect the regression equation to essentially work roughly equally well for everybody. And so yes, it's going to underestimate and overestimate in some cases, and that's totally natural from a sampling fluctuation perspective, but you just don't expect some really big deviant misprediction in the estimate of a value in the dependent variable. So you're looking to see that none of these values are horribly mispredicted by the regression equation because we're assuming that the regression equation essentially works for everybody about equally within sampling fluctuations. Now, the other way to go about this, as I write in the textbook, is to estimate Cook's D, which you can go Analyze, Regression, Linear, and click on Save, and you can see Distances Cook's, and here we go, we can deselect what we've already looked for, and you'll recall that in the textbook I mentioned that a Cook's distance value that's greater than 1.0 is cause for concern. And we can see that SPSS has produced a table called residual statistics. And the Cook's distance value, the largest one, is 0.397 here. Cook's distance, minimum 0 0.000, maximum 0.397. Because none of them are as large as 1.0, I would feel confident that I don't have any outlying residuals that none of the residuals are especially poorly predicted.